In this section, we'll be talking about directional control valves. On the screen, you can see a valve um, in its rest position, where it is normally closed. Um, the way it works is that you push the lever on the left-hand side. Towards the right, it compresses the spring, and it also moves the port drilled through the center in line with the ports that are on the outside. So there it is in its activated position and the air supply can flow through. Um, and there it's back in its closed position. So this is a basic form of valve. It is manually activated and it has two ports. So looking a bit deeper into this valve, we'll see that um, we can call it a two two-way valve that is normally closed. It's manually actuated with a spring reset. And the illustration is shown um, the way we draw these valves is we, we ignore the outer casing of the valve and we look at only the center. Um, the number of positions will be indicated by, by blocks. And here we have two blocks for two positions. The number of ports where you can connect pipes onto will be um, illustrated with lines coming out of the blocks. And then on either end you'll have the method of actuation and the method of reset. So in the description that I've just given, um, the first two um, indicates the number of ports, how many pipes you can connect. The second two is the number of positions. So it's two, two way. Then you have that's rest position, which is normally closed. Uh, the actuation method, which is manual and the reset method, which is with a spring. So there's a lot of different ways we can activate and reset valves. So here's a four categories. We have manual, mechanical, electric, and pneumatic actuation. So manual actuation means that a person physically has to push something, either with your hand or with a, with a foot pedal, um, to activate the valve. And those are the different illustrations that we use. The last one means with those notches in it, selector that indicates a, um, a detent position. So it will stay in the position that you put it in. The second is mechanical actuation, which could be a spring, could be a pin button or a roller, which is activated when, a, when something moves past it. Third is electrical. <clears throat> and those are electro-pneumatic valves, which are operated with a solenoid. And the fourth one is pneumatic. These are pneumatic piloted valves. So there's more information we need to know about a valve um, and its designations and its ports in order to put it into a circuit diagram. So these are called directional control valves because they're changing the direction of flow of the, um, the air in the circuit. So we already know that we've got two positions with the blocks and we, we have a number of ports telling us um, how many connections we have. Um, but in the, the uh, valve on the top right hand side, we also have pneumatic actuation. And those are numbered with a 10 and a 12. So how do we number these ports? First of all, your supply is always number one. That is the, the air comes from the main supply. <clears throat> your exhaust ports are usually shown at the bottom and they are unequal numbers, like three and five. And at the top, you've got the working ports. Those are the, the ports that connect to the, um, the device that you're controlling. And those are normally even numbers and uh, usually two, or four or both. The ports are numbered from left, from right to left. Um, and then the pilot ports are designated by whichever ports are being connected when you apply a pressure to them. So for example, um, if you apply a pressure to port 10, you're connecting port one to nothing. So it's closed, so it's one zero. If you apply a pressure to port 12, you're connecting 
Uh, the block moves to the right and you're connecting port 1 to port 2, so therefore it's called 1, 2 or 12. At the bottom we've got a few more options. We have a 3, 2-way valve that is pneumatically piloted at spring reset. And then on the right hand side we have a 5, 2-way valve which is double piloted. Some more examples, um, the top we have a five two-way valve, double piloted, very common for controlling double acting cylinders, we'll see those a lot. And then we have what we call limit switches, which are roller follower switches and they usually detecting the position of the cylinder or the cylinder rod as it moves from one position to another. So it's mechanically actuated. Then we get flow control valves. And these ones um, control the flow in a different way. Um, there's an OR valve and an AND valve. Both of them have three connections, but they operate in a slightly different way. An OR valve is a valve that you can apply a pressure to, to either port 12 or 14, and you will get um, an air supply going out of port 2. Um, an AND valve, if you apply pressure to one of port 12 or port 14, it will close, but if you apply pressure to both, then you'll get a, uh, a dis discharge of air out of port 2. So you have to have both supplies connected for an AND valve to work. Then we've got check valves, and these are essentially one-way valves. The airflow in the check valve can flow from left to right, but not from right to left. We have a spring-loaded check valve which does the same thing. A one-way flow control valve um, has a check valve in one direction, which forces all the air through a restrictor, and then from left to right, and then from right to left, the air supply can bypass the restrictor and go through the check valve and therefore have less restriction. The last one is a flow control adjustable valve with no bypass. The arrow across the valve always indicates that it's adjustable. 